Hey guys, it is Jess with Watch Kitty Shrink, and I'm here with my week 73 post op VSG update. Um, since the last time I was here, something pretty cool happened. I was actually in People Magazine. That's pretty, like, amazing to me. I've read People Magazine my whole life. Um, but yeah, I was in People Magazine, and I was not talking about just myself. I was actually talking about the entire weight loss surgery community. So, that was a really cool moment for me. Um, they actually approached me. We did an interview, some pictures. It was just really cool. And I mentioned in that because I got a couple of new um, subscribers after that. And so I just wanted to say welcome you all. If for some reason you have not seen my People Magazine article and you want to, leave me a comment here and I will reply back with the link to see it on their website. <clears throat> so, like I said, this is week 73. My last video was week 70 where I said that I was not wanting to talk about the R word and unfortunately this video is going to be about the R word. So let's just jump into it. I am Jess, watch Kitty Shrink. I am 30 years old, I'm 5 feet tall. On August 23rd, 2016, I had a surgery called vertical sleeve gastrectomy which is a weight loss surgery procedure where they go in and they remove permanently 80% of your stomach. Um, my, surge, my insurance did not cover this procedure and I did have to pay um, $10,500 in cash. For those interested, my parents actually paid for that for me and this was done in Pikeville, Kentucky with Dr. Amy Johnson at Pikeville Medical Center. My highest weight ever was in April of 2016 and it was 285.0 my surgery weight was 255.4. Now, my lowest weight, okay, I reached my first weight um, goal, which was to be under 150 pounds on July 7th, 2017, um, and that was 149.9. The lowest I have got was in October of 2017, and it was 140.8. So on week 70, which is the last time I was here, I was 143.0. Week 71, I was 142.4. Week 72, I was 143.8. And this week, week 73, I am 145.0. So, I... I have not made a video in a couple of weeks because I have been struggling mentally with what's going on um, and I did not want to talk about the R word. I still don't but denial isn't helping anybody so I might as well just get it out there. I am struggling with some regain and I do not use that word lightly because I know that that is something that um, everyone struggles with. In this community whether you're actually struggling with regain or just struggling with the fear of regain I know re <clears throat> regain is a big deal in this community and I know for a lot of people um, you might have bigger numbers than me but for me that officially puts me at a five pound regain and that is a big deal to me because I haven't gained weight in over two years um, other than like I would gain a pound and then lose two pounds gain half an ounce you know, this is officially gaining weight. Um, so yeah. Um, I had been, you know, floating around in the low 140s for months now. And then 145 is mid-140s. And 145 is too close to 150 for me. And I am starting to freak out a little bit. I'm trying to keep it together because I know... At the end of the day, two years ago, I would have cut my own leg off to weigh 145 pounds. So I'm not trying to be ungrateful when I talk about this, but I also have to make this my wake up moment. I can't just keep giving myself a slide because yeah, I would have loved to have weighed this two years ago. 145 can easily turn into 150, which can turn into 155, which could turn into 200 pounds before you know it because I do not have a healthy relationship with food. That's why I needed weight loss surgery in the first place. So 
I'm trying not to be too hard on myself and those of you who've been around here for a while know that that's not easy. I am very hard on myself in general. Um, I'm a perfectionist, so I am very disappointed in myself, but instead of beating myself up, I'm just going to try to use this as my wake-up call to get it together. Um, the plan is this. My diet is actually pretty good um, as far as not eating things I'm not supposed to. I've pretty much got keto down on lock. I've done it for so long that I just, I know how to do it well, but I'm not doing things that I should be doing. Like my water, out of seven days, I might hit my water go two days. And I haven't been taking my vitamins regularly for almost three months now. And that is not who I said I would be. That's not what I set out to do. Um, I made a promise to myself and a promise to my family that I would always keep up on my hydration and my vitamins because I didn't want to go from being unhealthy because I was obese to go to being thin but still unhealthy because I didn't take care of myself. So number one goal is to get 64 ounces of water every single day, even on the weekends. Um, number two goal is to take all of my vitamins every single day, even on the weekends. Um, and then my other goal is, I've been talking about how I struggle with this for a while now, is to just move more. Um, I've been actually doing good with that for the last two weeks. I've hit 10,000 steps almost every single day. Um, but I'm just going to keep doing that. Um, just increasing my movements as much as I can. Um, there's a new gym opening in my town. It's an all ladies gym and they're actually going to be offering spin or cycle classes. And I'm really excited for that because I've always wanted to try a class like that. And they've never had them in my town before, like to where I could get to them. So I'm really excited to try that. So yeah, I'm just going to go back to basics. I know how to do this. I know how to lose weight. I've lost a massive amount of it. It's not like I'm out here wondering what I can do. I know what I can do. It's just a matter of making myself do it. If you don't follow me on Instagram and you would like to, my name is Watch Kitty Shrink. And in my Instagram stories, I have been documenting every single thing that I eat. And I've also been documenting my vitamins and water so that hopefully you guys can help me keep accountable. If I haven't posted my water, if y'all wanted to send me a message and be like, girl, how much have you drunk today? That would be really beneficial. And um, let's see, what else did I write down? Um, okay, just one other thing I had wrote down is that if you watched my beginning videos, I was talking about how I haven't went to the movies in, I hadn't been to the movies in a long time because I could no longer comfortably fit in the seats and I was also embarrassed that I was spilling into my friend's seat and it wasn't just movies I avoided doing everything with my friends and just as like a little thing to show you how my life has changed in the last two weeks I've been to the movies three times and I haven't thought a thing about it I posted a picture on there about how comfortably I sat in the seats but um, I'm just eternally grateful for this journey 142 pounds ago, or I guess we're back to 140 pounds ago, I would not have been this person. I would not have been out enjoying my life with my friends. I would not have done so many things that I have done the last three or four months. Um, so yeah, even though I'm really upset about the five pounds, I'm trying my best to recognize how far I've came to. Um, I had a doctor's appointment that I've been telling you all about. I'm trying, I made a video a minute ago and I deleted it because I came across a lot more negatively than I meant to. But let's just say in my area, unfortunately, um, there is a really bad drug problem. So therefore there is a really bad problem of people going to the doctor just to get pain medication. And I think that that influences the doctors around here so much that they're not always very helpful. Um, when I went to the urologist, that was kind of an issue. He was kind of like, well, are you here about pain, blah, blah, blah. 
to the point where I finally came out and said, listen, I'm not trying to get you to give me pain medication. The pain is severe, but even if you give me pain medication, I won't feel it. I don't want that in my life. I don't want to be exposed to that. I just want you to find out what is causing the issue and see if we can fix it. Well, that appointment didn't help, so then I went to a OBGYN. I'm not going to get too personal on here, guys, but sort of the same issues happened there where she was like, oh, just... First of all, she was trying to rush me out. My mom liked the OBGYN better than the urologist. The OBGYN is going to change my medicine, so at least she's doing something to try, but she was definitely just kind of trying to rush me out of there. And... Um, I mentioned a couple of times that I wanted my hormone levels checked because I've lost a massive amount of weight. I know that my hormones have changed and I'm very willing to go ahead and start taking a hormone supplement, but I want my blood checked so that I know what hormone it is that I'm deficient in. And she, she didn't do it. She did not do a hormone test. She just kind of said, oh yeah, maybe your hormones have changed. And I said, well, can we check that? <laughs> And she was like, mm, we don't really need to do that yet. And then I think that I'm left with a bad taste in my mouth about that appointment because of this reason. And the reason I'm going to share this moment is not to diss that doctor. Because like I said, she is changing my medicine. I start the new medicine on Sunday and maybe it will help me. But when she said she was giving me a new medicine, I asked her, the side effects, I said, because I don't want to take anything with a well-known side effect of gaining weight. Because people, if you are taking medicine and it's going into your body, you have every right to ask anything in this world you want to know about it. And she kind of got up on a high horse with me and gave me a very, to me, it felt very patronizing. She said, sweetie, I think you and I both know what causes weight gain and what is it. And y'all should know, most of you have been here long enough to know that I'm real hormonal anyway. So I can go from being sad to being mad in about 10 seconds. So I admit that I was hormonal and emotional anyway. But when she did that, I did get snappy right back. And I said, I guess the answer that you're looking for is that um, overeating causes weight gain. However... We both know that certain medications cause increased appetite. So I should have changed my wording, but what I meant is, will this medicine, as a lot of estrogen medications do, will it increase my appetite? Because I am worried about that. And she was like, oh, well, you are right. Certain medications do do that. And then she proceeded to like, she had first said she was going to give me one kind of medicine and then she decided to try another medicine first because of those concerns. But don't, as a medical professional, don't assume that just because someone has had weight loss surgery that it's only because they were, they just wanted to overeat. Because that's how it came across to me. We both know what causes weight gain. As if I wanted to sit around and just stuff my face. No, a lot more than that causes weight gain. There's something else going on inside the brain or inside the body that causes someone to overeat. In my case, I had an eating disorder. So, don't try to patronize me about that. I've spent the last two years addressing my eating disorder and trying to get better and I just thought that it would be nice to discuss if this medication is going to jeopardize all that. I know that you know just because I'm on a medicine and it increases my appetite that I have to fight through that but I wanted to know what I was facing. And the reason I even mention this is because I know I'm not the only weight loss surgery patient who gets like the former fat kid speeches. Well, we know what causes weight gain. Maybe you don't. Maybe if you've never been overweight, you don't know that it's not just because somebody wanted an extra piece of cake. There's generally underlying issues that cause weight gain. But anyway, um... I seem like I'm a little more upset about that than I felt like I was. Like I was really upset at the time and then I felt like I was dealing with it. But evidently I'm still a little upset. 
But I just wanted to sincerely say thank you all so much for sticking with me. I know my hormones have been all over the place and that sometimes my videos don't even make sense because I can't think clearly. But I really appreciate you all always being here for me. And um, to all my new subscribers, welcome. I'm so glad to meet you all. If we haven't ever talked before, leave a comment down below so that I can get to know you. And I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.